Okay, this is going to be the first of a set of videos on how to determine whether or not a sequence converges or not. And in this video, we'll primarily look at just some graphic examples to show you graphically what it looks like for a sequence to converge. And then we'll do one other little introduction uh, before we actually start doing some problems in some later videos. So first of all, just a reminder, it says the limit of a sequence is L. All that means is as you go way off to the right, if the terms of the sequence are approaching some fixed number, then the sequence is said to converge to that number, L, whatever it is. <clears throat> and if the limit of a sequence exists, then the sequence converges to L. If the limit of a sequence does not exist, then the sequence diverges. In other words, the terms are not settling in on a fixed number. Now again, in this video, it's primarily just to show you a few graphics examples of this. So let's put a few up here and see what they look like. And won't do a lot of math on these, but these will just be some basic introductory examples. So in the first one, start with one of the most basic ones. Suppose you had this. Uh, the sequence is defined to be 1 over n. <coughs> so we'll plot a few points on this. And the idea is that if you have, if n is equal to 1, you'll have 1 over 1. I have a point 1 right here. Then when n is equal to 2, you'd have 1 half, and you'll have a point that looks like this. <clears throat> so you can always plot the points. Uh, 1 over 3 would be a third point about right here. Uh, a fourth would be about right here. And if you keep going, this thing will look something like this. These points will get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. So what you can conclude is that if you take the limit as n goes way off to infinity, <clears throat> the sequence itself, the terms of the sequence, seem to be approaching the x-axis, which is 0. So the limit to this sequence would be 0. Uh, the terms are getting closer and closer and closer to 0. And really, that's what we're going to do here. So if, in that case, you could say that the, uh, the limit does exist, it's equal to 0, and this sequence right here converges to 0. And what we'll do is just try a few different examples. Some of them will converge, and some of them won't show you a little bit of everything. So let's get rid of this one, and we'll try another one. So that sequence, all the terms got closer and closer and closer to zero, and the sequence converged to zero. So in this next example, um, let's suppose we had this. Suppose we had n divided by 2. And let's see what this one does. So when n is equal to 1, you would have 1 half. Um, when n is equal to 2, you'd have 1. When n is equal to 3, you'd have 1 and a half. When n is equal to 4, you'd have 2, and so on. It'll keep going like this, and you'll see a pattern to the dots. <clears throat> but the point is, this time, if you go way off to the right, if you take the limit as n approaches infinity, these points are not settling on a fixed number. They just keep going up, and they go up forever off to a positive infinity. So they never do settle on a fixed number. So in this case, graphically, you can see that the limit of this sequence, as you go way off to the right, would approach a positive infinity. <clears throat> now, since it's not settling on a fixed number, that means that the limit of the sequence does not exist, and this series would diverge. So if it settles on a fixed number, it converges. If it doesn't settle on a fixed number, it diverges. And we'll try a couple of other ones. So there's a few variations that sometimes cause some problems on these. So let's get rid of this. Okay, in the next example, suppose we had, uh, let's go, well, let's try this one. Let's try n squared. Now again, you can kind of guess, if you put these down, 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, it would be way up here, and clearly this thing is going way off to positive infinity. So again, you could say that the uh, limit, as you go way off to the right, is going to approach a positive infinity. Again, the limit does not exist, so this is another example of one that diverges. So if the sequence is not settling on a fixed number, then it diverges. And we'll try a couple more examples. Okay, now the next one, suppose we had sometimes you have series that, that alternates or oscillates between terms. So suppose we had this one, 3 plus negative 1 <coughs> to the n power. Now you might remember from previous videos <coughs> that anytime you have negative 1 to an n power, that's like a switch. It just switches back and forth between positive or negative 1. So if n is an even power, <coughs> then this would be a plus 1. If n is a minus power or a odd power, then this would be a minus 1. 
So if we plotted some points, here's what a few of the points would look like. Uh, when n is equal to 1, <clears throat> you'd have negative 1 to the first power, which is negative 1. So 3 minus 1 would give you a point at 2. Then if n is equal to 2, you'd have negative 1 squared, which would be a positive 1. <clears throat> 3 plus 1, it would go up to 4. If you went back to an odd, again, you'd have 3 minus 1. It would be <clears throat> back at 2. If you went to 4, an even power, you'd have 3 plus 1. You'd be back up at 4. And it would just continue this pattern between 2 and 4. So if you have something that looks like this, now again, the question is, <clears throat> what's the limit of this thing as you go way off to infinity? Is it settling on a single fixed number? And the answer is no. It's bouncing back and forth between 2 and 4. So again, you would conclude that the limit does not exist and the series diverges. So again, if it's not settling on a fixed number, in this case it's bouncing back and forth, not settling on a fixed number, the series diverges. <clears throat> but just because it bounces back and forth doesn't necessarily mean that it will always diverge. Let's take a look at the next example. So let me get rid of these. In the next example, it's going to look similar, but let's suppose that it was this. Suppose that it was 3 plus a negative 1 to the n power um, divided by n. So it looks like this. So what the first term would be this one. If n is equal to 1, you'd have negative 1 to the first power, which would be a negative 1 divided by 1, which would be 3 minus 1, which would be 2. So you're going to have a point right here at 2. Then when n is equal to 2, this would be a positive 1 divided by 2. You'd have 3 plus 1 half, and this would be 3 and a half. It would go up to about right here. Then when n is equal to 3, this would be an odd power. Uh, you'd have 3 minus a third, and it would begin to drop down, say, to about right here. Now, just to run these out, it's going to go here, 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 and so on. But they get closer and closer to, I'll kind of put a dotted line right through the middle of it, um, two, three. So what happens is that they go above the line, below the line, above the line, below the line, but it's settling in on, if you go way off to the right, you can show the limit of this thing would approach three. So it would be a three. So in this case, it is alternating, but the limit still exists because it's settling on a fixed number. So in the previous example, it alternated and um, or I actually oscillated between 2 and 4, but didn't settle on a fixed number. But depending on the problem, it's possible that it could settle on a fixed number. So in this case, the limit exists, the sequence converges, and it converges to 3. Because if you go way off to the right, <coughs> this thing is approaching 3. Okay, so what that is, that's just a few kind of graphical ideas of, of what it means for a sequence to converge. So if the sequence is going to converge, if you go way off to the right, <coughs> then the last term, or the latest term in the sequence has to approach some fixed number L. And if it does, then it converges. Now, before we start on some problems, let's take a look at one more thing that sometimes causes problems for students. <clears throat> and it looks like this. You've got a definition, and you'll see this. <clears throat> it says the let f of x be a function so that the limit of the function as you go way off to the right is equal to L. Then if you have a sequence such that uh, f at n is equal to a sub n for every n, then the limit of the sequence is equal to L. Now, what does all this mean? And let's start by looking at a specific example, and I think it'll help in why you need to do all this. So a specific problem might be something like this. If you had a problem, let's suppose it was A sub N, and I'm just going to use uh, 10N <coughs> divided by 2N plus 9. So here's a sequence, and what I want to do is this. I want to show whether this sequence converges or not. Does it converge and settle on a single number if I go way off to, to the right, or does it not? Now, to start with, I'm going to go ahead and plot these. Now, this won't be an exact graph of what they look like, but it'll be something pretty close. So if I were to take each of the terms of this sequence and plot them, uh, they would look something like uh, this right here. Now, these they don't line up exactly, um, but they'll have this general shape. So what I want you to do is just get a feel for the shape of this thing. So now the problem is this, is you can look at it graphically and say, well, it looks like if you go way off to the right, these blue dots 
seem to be leveling off at, and you might make an educated guess, that they seem to be leveling off at 5. So it's tempting to say then the limit of this sequence as n goes to infinity would be 5. But the question is, how do you show that? I mean, you have an intuitive feel for it, but how can you prove it? And the problem is this, is nothing so far gives you any rules for showing um, that the limit of a sequence, uh, for determining what the limit of a sequence is. But what you do have is this. Earlier in the course, you have lots of rules for finding the limits of a function. So you can use any of those rules to show that the limit of a function as x goes to infinity is equal to L. So what you'll notice when you walk these problems, one of the very first things that you'll always see will be this. I think I'll put this in red. Um, the first thing I do is change it from a sequence in terms of n into a function. So it'll come up with this. f of x is equal to, and I'll put 10x divided by 2x plus 9. So the question is, you've got here's a sequence in terms of n, here's a corresponding function in terms of x. Now why would you do that? Well, and again, it has to do with whether or not you have rules to justify these. So let's look at these steps up here. So what I'd like to do is instead of that uh, sequence, I want to find a function. And I think I'll draw the graph of it to start with. So if I can find a function represented by this red line, and it goes exactly through every dot in the sequence, in other words, every dot in the sequence lines up on the graph, and that's what this part right here says. So if you can find a sequence so that every term of the sequence is exactly matched by a point on the function, then you're, you can use uh, find the limit of the function and use that to find the limit of the sequence. So the idea is this. In this step right here, we'll kind of consider it to be a three-step process. So step number one, I want to change the sequence into a function. We'll call this step one. And that's what this is right here. So that's why on a lot of these problems, the very first thing you do is change it from a sub n into this. And the reason you do this is that you have rules that you can use to find the limit of the function. So let's turn the blue dots off now. And what you've really done is this. You've changed it from a sequence problem into a function problem. Now you can find the limit of this function. If you find the limit of this thing right here, if you go way off to the right, again, you can look at it. And it seems to be approaching uh, this line right here. So it seems to be 5. Now, real quickly, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll find the limit of the function, and this is going to be, well, we'll put it up here. This is going to be step two. So step one is change the sequence into a function. Step two, find the limit of that function, and we can do that right here. So I've got 10x divided by 2x plus 9. Now, you might remember, if you remember your... Uh, limit rules, um, if the power in the numerator is the same as the powers in the denominator, the highest power in the numerator is 1, highest power in the denominator is 1, then if that's the case, then the limit is just the ratio of the coefficients in front of that. So this will turn into 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and that is the limit. So what that is, that is this right here. You've just showed that the limit of the function is 5. Then what the final step says is this. And we'll go ahead and put the dots back on there again. So if the function, if the red line is approaching 5, and all the blue dots, by this statement right here, if all the blue dots have to lie on the red line, if the red line is approaching 5, then the blue dots also have to approach 5. So you can conclude this final step. And what the final step is, is if the limit of the function is equal to 5, then you can come down here and say the limit of the sequence must also be 5. So if this one is 5, you can conclude that this one must also be 5, and you've solved the problem. So what this says, since the limit is 5, it exists, then this function converges to 5. Converges to 5. And the reason I do that is I always have a few students who don't understand this transition. Why is it important to change it from a sequence in terms of n to a function in terms of x? And really, it's just a matter of fact, uh, the fact that you've got rules for finding the limits of a function. But at this point, you don't have any rules for finding the limit of a sequence. So uh, change it from a sequence into a function, 
find the limit of the function, and then if they agree at every point, then the limit of the function is the limit of the sequence, and you can show that it converges or not. And one final thing, you'll see this occasionally, uh, it, notice it's, my students will make the argument, well, it looks to me like even without changing, it actually would have gotten the same answer, which is true, but again, you're trying to be correct as you run through these things, but everybody gets a little lazy, and I've also noticed that even in some textbooks, uh, a lot of times they won't take the time to change it to this X step, uh, but just be aware of the fact that you really should, and um, that's why it's uh, set up in this definition. So again, the three steps are, first of all, change it from a uh, sequence into a function. Step number two, uh, find the limit of the function. And then step number three is whatever the limit of the function is, the limit of the sequence is going to be the same thing. So anyway, there's a couple of things before we get started. Now in the next video, we'll actually take a look at some real problems.